Hi guys, Justin again from chemistrynotes.com and this is section one, video number three. Now, section one is kind of like chapter one. It's called Foundations of Chemistry. And I said this is video number three. If you're coming straight from video number two, at the end of that video, I said that we would be continuing with significant figures right now. That's actually, I put that on pause. That's in the next video, video number four. So if you're looking for more significant figure stuff, it's in the next video after this video number four, okay? This video, section one, video number three, this covers two topics. The first topic I'm starting to write down right now, types of error and measurement. And in the second half of this video, we'll start to talk about accuracy versus precision. All right, so let's get started. Types of error and measurement. There are two types of errors. There are random errors, which are essentially human errors. And then there's number two, when I get to number two, it's going to be systematic errors. Systematic errors are, tend to be uh, instrumentation errors. Let's take a look at number one. Random errors. Measurement errors that have an equal probability of being too high or too low, too long or too short, etc. These are usually human errors. They're haphazard, random, experimental, and or measurement mistakes. They happen one direction or the other 50% of the time. Too high, too low, too long, too short etc. Okay. Systematic errors are errors that are consistently wrong in one direction or the other. Okay. So for example, uh, if you have a, if you have an analytical balance, that's not calibrated correctly, maybe every measurement is too high. See what I mean? So systematic errors, these are measurement errors that tend towards being consistently too high or too low too long or too short, okay? Systematic errors are not human errors. Systematic errors are usually instrumentation errors, okay? So we have two synonyms here. Number one, random errors is like human error. Systematic errors is kind of synonymous with instrumentation errors, equipment errors, glassware errors. These are usually instrumentation errors, such as a balance that is not calibrated correctly and consistently is giving mass readings that are too high or too short, but it, I'm sorry, too high or too low. Okay. But it's usually, it's only one way or the other, not both. All right. At the top of page two of our notes, we're moving on to the second topic of this video, accuracy versus precision. Okay. Now in non chemistry class life, Okay, we're in chemistry, so there's a difference between accuracy and precision. But sometimes accuracy and precision, these guys are thrown away, thrown around in everyday life, kind of like they mean the same thing. Very similar to the way mass and weight is thrown around, thrown around as if it's the same thing. Accuracy and precision are actually different. Okay, so accuracy is defined as how well a measurement agrees with the true value. Precision, on the other hand, is how well a series of measurements agree with each other. Who cares about what the true value is? Okay, so precision has nothing to do with accuracy because we don't care about the true value. We only care about how well do our measurements kind of relate to each other. All right, so we're going to examine four situations. I'm going to use a dartboard analogy, and because we have four situations, we're going to have to draw four dartboards. I'm going to have to draw four dartboards. All right. Dartboard analogy. So the dart is going to represent um, the result of a measurement. Okay. Or the result of an experiment. That's what your dart is going to represent. And I show darts, or I will show darts by drawing a little X. Okay. Now the bullseye represents the true value. All right. So dashboard analogy, let me just read it again from the top at regular speed. A dart represents the results of a measurement or experiment. The bullseye is going to represent the true value or the accepted value or the literature value of the measurement or experiment. Okay. All right. So dartboard number one on the far left, I've got five darts. That means I've done five measurements or five experiments or five trials, if you will. Now, the darts are all over the place, okay? Terrible. 
So it's not accurate and it's not precise. We have errors wherever you can imagine we have them. So we have large random errors. In other words, poor human technique. Okay. We may or may not have systematic error, but we can't pinpoint whether we do or not in this situation. Now, take a look at dartboard number two. All five darts means all five experiments, all five measurements, whatever they represent, are right on top of each other. So we're precise. So we have good technique, no human errors, no random errors. Okay, But we're nowhere near the bullseye. So the results that we're getting every single time are precise, but they're not accurate. If we're not accurate, we have large systematic errors. We have an instrument, we have an instrumentation error. Something is wrong with our instrument or our glassware. Okay. Now look at the one on the far right is very, it's very obvious. We're precise, we're accurate. We've got no human error, no random error, right? And then we also have no systematic error, no instrumentation error. Now, I told you we'd be doing four analogies. We've only seen three. Here comes the fourth one. Fourth dartboard coming up. It says, hey, is it possible to be accurate without being precise? I see this question asked all the time on quizzes and tests, so I thought I'd put it here. Here's my fourth dartboard. And how am I going to draw this so I'm accurate without being precise? Well, I said we had five experiments or measurements. There's my five darts. One dart's a bullseye. And the average of the five darts is also the bullseye, right? The average of the five measurements or five experiments or five trials or five whatevers ends up being the bullseye. So we have, we're not pre precise because the darts are not all on top of each other. Okay. So we have no precision, which means we have a lot of human error, but we're accurate. All right. So this is accuracy without precision. Okay. Very uncommon, but it does exist. All right. That little swervy line means I'm kind of moving to an example, and here it is. It says, a student performed an analysis. So this student could be you, could be the student next to you, doesn't matter, but it's a student in a lab performing an analysis of a sample for its calcium content. And this student got the following results. Now there's four results, which means the student has done done the experiment four different times and the results were 14.92% calcium, 14.91% calcium the second time around, third trial 14.88% calcium and then 14.91% calcium. So just by eyeballing that we can kind of get an idea if this is precise or not but we can't eyeball if he's accurate. To be accurate you have to know what the true value is and it says that right here. The actual amount of calcium, by the way, in the sample is 16.25%. What conclusion can you draw about the accuracy and precision? Well, that row of results, all starting with 14, high 14s, okay? He's precise, so he's not making any human error. Okay, there's no random errors here. So he's precise, but he's not accurate. He's not getting anywhere near 16.25% calcium. So he's not accurate. So something is wrong with the process. Something is wrong with the way he's doing this, these experiments every single time. Okay. So we have systematic errors. All right. Systematic errors are occurring. All right. Fresh page of notes at the very top here. Ooh, there it says significant figures. Now we started to introduce significant figures in uh, video number two of this section, section one. In video number four, which is coming up right after this, we're gonna go into great detail on significant figures and calculations, all right? So that's coming up and stick around for that. You won't wanna miss it. See you soon.